good morning to all of you in previous session we have seen autocorrelation we have solved one example related to autocorrelation we have seen how to identify the correlation of discrete time signal okay so in today's session we will be discussing z transform and analysis of lts systems okay we already discussed analysis of lti systems using convolution summation as well as by solving uh, the difference equation right we have seen that uh, we can analyze the given lti system that means we can identify the response of an lti system by using convolution summation in convolution summation the input sequence will get convolved with the impulse response while uh, you can use the difference equation in case of ir system infinite impulse response system because the response of ir system cannot be directly identified by the convolution summation so you can solve those difference equation where you will be identifying or you are identifying the uh, homogeneous solution particular solution and from that you are identifying zero input response and zero state response so by combining zero input response zero state response you get get the total response of the system so we have already seen those two techniques that is convolution sum and the solution of difference equation for analyzing lti system so similarly z transform can be used to analyze lti systems okay so <clears throat> So the Z transform will today see the Z transform. Okay. So basically the transform techniques are important tool in the analysis of signals as well as the LTI systems. The Z transform provide us with a means of characterizing an LTI system and its response to various signals by using its pole zero plots okay so by using pole zero locations which can be obtained from the z transform of the given sequence or for the given system we can analyze the given system by using its z transform right so we'll be going into details of what is pole what is zero how those pole zero can be plotted right in the complex plane okay, that uh, we'll see in subsequent lecture so uh, we'll initially see the definition of z transform okay so the direct z transform is uh, defined as basically it is a power series so the z transform of discrete time signal x of n is defined as the power series as capital x of z is equals to summation n is equals to minus infinity to infinity we are identifying the z transform of x of n so x of n is taken here into z to the power minus n okay so where z small z is a complex variable okay so basically the discrete time domain signal which is nothing but the x of n it is in the discrete time domain okay so it is in small n domain basically so this discrete time domain signal x of n is represented in the complex domain okay that is in z domain okay so we are representing x of n in z domain right complex domain by using this z transform equation right so this is the formula for z transform that is x of z is equals to summation n is equals to minus infinity to infinity x of n into z to the power minus n okay. so this is the formula for z transform so it is called as the direct z transform because it transforms the time domain signal x of n into its complex plane representation that is nothing but capital x of z 
and the inverse procedure inverse procedure means identifying x of n from x of z is called as the inverse z transform okay so it is a reversible process basically right so that means you can obtain the z transform from the signal x of n right and similarly from x of n you can obtain x of z okay so obtaining the x of n okay obtaining x of n from its z transform is called as inverse z transform okay so that means this z transform is a reversible process okay so the z transform of discrete time signal x of n can be represented as z transform of x of n okay you are identifying z transform of x of n and it is denoted as capital x of z right so whereas the relationship between x of n and x of z can be represented as x of n by using z transform you can obtain x of z and from x of z you can obtain x of n it is a bidirectional arrow okay so it is indicating it is a reversible process right so this is the relationship between what x of n and x of z that means from x of n you can obtain capital x of z and from x of z you can obtain x of n okay so basically <clears throat> this x of z okay x of z will exist only for values of z okay so there is one concept which is called as region of convergence okay that is it is nothing but roc right so this is nothing but region of convergence okay so basically this region of convergence is the set of all values of z for which x of z attains a finite value and those values of z can be identified from this z transform that is nothing but x of z so in x of z you can put or substitute various values of z and you can identify for which values of z x of z is finite okay so roc uh, this can be defined as the roc of x of z is the set of all values of small z okay for which x of z is for which x of z is or for which x of z is finite value okay. or for which x of z attains a finite value okay okay so th that is the definition of what roc so you can identify the roc of given transform signal okay which is represented in z domain so this roc uh, it's nothing but the set of values of z okay so comprising multiple values of z for which x of z is a finite value right so we will try to solve one problem here uh, as well as we will try to identify the roc for the obtained z transform okay so here i think i missed the origin so this x1 of n i'll take origin here right so x2 of n i can take it here x3 of n realizing x4 of n so here we have to determine the z transform of the following finite duration signal all these are the finite signals okay because it doesn't have the infinite samples in it right so we'll also try to identify the roc of these 
for the Z transform obtained for, for these signals, right? So we will try to solve one by one. So the given first signal, the given discrete time signal it is given here so x1 of n is equals to 1 comma 2 comma 5 comma 7 comma 0 comma 1 using at first one okay so the z transform of x1 of n is given as you can represent it as x1 of z okay you, you are simply writing here the formula for z transform x of z is equals to n is equals to minus infinity to infinity x of n into z to the power minus n but here given signal is x1 of n so i am writing here x1 of n and its z transform will be denoted as x1 of z so x1 of n multiplied by z to the power minus n okay but here you can identify that uh, this uh, signal x1 of n exists only for n is equals to 0 to 1 2 3 4 5 okay so it is starting at n is equals to 0 ending at n is equals to 5 okay so that means this summation limit you can take it for n is equals to 0 to 5 instead of minus infinity to infinity so it will be n is equals to 0 to 5 x1 of n into z to the power minus n right and here you can substitute these values of n in this equation so you will get what x1 of 0 multiplied by z to the power 0 plus x1 of 1 into z inverse right i'm substituting values of n right n is equals to 1 n is equals to 2 up to n is equals to 5 because x1 of n only exists for n is equals to 0 to 5 similarly x1 of 2 into z to the power minus 2 plus x1 of 3 is equal into z to the power minus 3 x1 of 4 into z to the power minus 4 x1 of 5 into z to the power minus 5 right so if i substitute i will write the solution here okay so if i substitute these values here so x1 of z will be equal to what the value of x1 of 0 is 1 okay so 1 multiplied by z to the power 0 will be simply 1 because z to the power 0 will be 1 right and x1 of 0 is also 1 plus this x1 of 1 is 2 right so 2 multiplied by z inverse so it will be 2 z inverse plus x1 of 2 into z to the power minus 2 x1 of 2 is 5 so 5 into z to the power minus 2 right plus <clears throat> x1 of 3 is 7 7 multiplied by z to the power minus 3 so 7 multiplied by z to the power minus 3 x1 of 4 is 0 so 0 multiplied by anything will be 0 right and next x1 of 5 is 1 so 1 multiplied by z to the power 5 so 1 multiplied by z to the power minus 5 okay so this is the required z transform of x1 of n okay so what z transform we obtained here so x1 of z is equals to 1 plus 2 z inverse plus 5 z to the power minus 2 plus 7 z to the power minus 3 plus z to the power minus 5 okay so this is the required z transform of x1 of n okay so we'll try to identify the roc okay roc for this x1 of z right so roc is nothing but all values of z okay for which x1 of z is a finite right? okay x1 of z attains a finite value so if you substitute any value of z if you substitute z is equals to 1 2 3 4 or maybe even infinity if i am substituting z is equals to infinity so it will be 1 upon infinity and 1 upon infinity is 0 right so if you substitute any value of z so you will get the finite value of x1 of z but if you substitute z is equals to 0 
okay so it will be 1 upon 0 z inverse means 1 upon z and if you are substituting z is equals to 0 so it will be 1 upon 0 so 1 upon 0 will be infinity so roc will be all values of z except for z is equals to 0 right so if you are uh, substituting z is equals to 0 in this case so it will be having value infinity that is x1 of z will be infinity for z is equals to 0 but for any other value of z x1 of z will be a finite value right so roc you can specify it as it is an entire z plane what does it means so it means all values of z okay so roc will be entire z plane except z is equals to 0 so only for z is equals to 0 x1 of z will be infinity but for all other values of z this x1 of z will be a finite value right so that means roc will be the entire z plane that means all values of z except z is equals to 0 so likewise you can identify the roc for the given transform obtain transform okay so similarly you can solve the second example okay so what is the given second example so the given sequence so you can write down this statement likewise right so here i will directly write down the se sequence now so given uh, discrete time signal x2 of n is equal to what is the given signal so it is 1 2 5 7 0 1 1 2 5 7 0 1, 5 7 0 1 right originate at 5 so it's z transform x2 of and z transform will be denoted as x2 of z again you can take it as n is equals to minus infinity to infinity x2 of n into z to the power minus n okay but again here you can restrict the values of n instead of minus infinity to infinity you can find it here that x2 of n is starting from n is equals to minus 2 right because at origin value is 5 so here n is 0 here n is minus 1 here n is minus 2 here n is 1 it is 2 it is 3 right so that means n is varying from minus 2 to 3 right so x2 of n multiplied by z to the power minus n again if you substitute these values in this equation so you will get x2 of minus 2 multiplied by z square right because if I'm substituting n is equals to minus 2 here, so minus minus plus will be so it will be z square. Similarly, x2 of minus 1 into z multiplied by z, right? Because it will be z to the power 1. Next, value of n will be 0. So x2 of 0 into z to the power 0 will be there. Then x2 of 1 multiplied by z inverse will be there. Similarly, x2 of 2 multiplied by z to the power minus 2 and x2 of 3 multiplied by z to the power minus 3 now simply again substitute these values x2 of minus 2 is 1 so it will be 1 multiplied by z square so it will be z square plus x2 of minus 1 is 2 so it will be 2z right? plus <coughs> x2 of 0 is 5 so it will be 5 multiplied by z plus to power 0 will be 1 plus x2 of 1 is 7 so 7 z inverse will be there right plus x2 of 2 is 0 so 0 multiplied by z to the power minus 2 will be 0 similarly you can identify it for the last value the x2 of 3 is 1 1 multiplied by z to the power minus 3 it will be z to the power minus 3 simply right so the required z transform of x2 of n is is x2 of z okay so x2 of z what you got here so it is z square plus 2z plus 5 plus 7z inverse plus z to the power minus 3 right again you can identify the roc so again the x of x2 of z will be finite for all values of z except when you substitute z is equals to infinity if i am substituting z is equals to infinity here so it will be infinity okay infinity square will be infinity 2 multiplied by infinity will be infinity right and infinity plus anything will be infinity correct so for z is equals to infinity 
x2 of z is infinite similarly for z is equals to 0 if i am substituting z is equals to 0 here so it will be 1 upon 0 again it will be infinity right so again it will be having an infinite value for z is equals to 0 so again roc will be all values of z okay that means entire z plane entire z plane except z is equals to 0 and z is equals to infinity okay that means the roc do, uh, doesn't contain these two values right so these are not the roc of the given uh, z transform okay but the remaining values of z will be the roc for the x2 of z right because for z is equals to 0 and z is equals to infinity x2 of z will be infinity right so likewise you can identify the z transform and the roc similarly you can solve this third example so what is given x3 of n is equals to it is given as that's 0 0 1 2 5 0 0 1 2 5 Seven zero one and originate first zero. So again, here I can write it say transform as or represent it as how x three of z is equals to summation n is equals to minus infinity to infinity x three of n into z to the power minus n. Here I can directly write down x three of z is equals to. So as uh, it is starting from n is equals to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So 0 to 7 will be the limits of n. And I can directly write down this z transform because 0 multiplied by z to the power 0 will be 0. Okay, for n is equals to 0, then for n is equals to 1, it will be 0 multiplied by z to the power minus 1 will be there so again it will be zero so directly it will start from n is equals to 2 so 1 multiplied by z to the power minus 2 will be there so it will be z to the power minus 2 plus 2 multiplied by z to the power minus 3 plus 5 multiplied by z to the power minus 4 plus z 7 z to the power minus 5 right next this is at n is equals to 6 but 0 multiplied by z to the power minus 6 will be zero again this will be 1 multiplied by z to the power 7 okay that is minus 7 okay so it will be simply z to the power minus 7 right so this is the required z transform for the given signal x3 of n okay so i have written directly here okay you can observe how we have solved in the first example you can write it likewise while solving in exam right but uh, here i have written directly okay so similarly again roc in this case will be again entire z plane okay entire z plane except z is equals to zero okay because again if i am substituting infinity in this case so it will be one upon infinity square so it will be simply zero right so if i am substituting infinity so i will be getting value zero so it will be a finite value okay but only for z is equals to zero i am getting infinite value so all values of z will be included in roc except z is equals to zero okay similarly you can solve the next example what is the next example so two four five seven zero one okay so x4 of n is equals to 2, 4, 5, 7, 0, 1, origin at 5, 7, 0, 1, origin at 5. Again, this is a transform of this x4 of n can be represented as x4 of z. It will be again summation n is equals to minus infinity to infinity x4 of n into z to the power minus n. Again, these limits will be from minus 2 to 3, right? Because this uh, this value 2 is present at n is equals to minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, right? So that means n will be varying from minus 2 to 3. 
so again I can directly write it down as 2 z square plus 4 z right plus 5 okay this is at n is equal to 0 so 5 multiplied by z to the power 0 will be 1 right so it will be simply 5 multiplied by 1 so it will be 5 this is 4 multiplied by z plus to power minus of minus 1 right so minus minus plus will be there so therefore it will be 4 z this will be at n is equal to minus 2 so z to the power minus of minus 2 will be there so z square so 2 z square similarly 7 z inverse plus 0 multiplied by 7 uh, sorry 0 multiplied by z to the power minus 2 will be there so it will be 0 simply and then 1 multiplied by z to the power minus 3 so it will be z to the power minus 3 okay so this is the required z transform of x4 of n so it will be x4 of z right and the roc in this case again roc will be entire z plane except z is equals to 0 if i am substituting 0 here so it will be 1 upon 0 it will be infinity and z is equals to infinity okay z is equals to infinity okay so if i am substituting infinity here okay in these two cases so it will be infinity infinity plus anything will be infinity right so again roc will be all values of z except z is equals to 0 and z is equals to infinity similarly next problem is x y of n is equals to del of n okay so it is x y of n is equals to del of n okay so we know that this del of n is the unit sample sequence and the value of del of n is equals to 1 for n is equals to 0 and it is 0 otherwise so it will exist only for n is equals to 0 okay so the z transform of x phi of n can be represented as x phi of z and the formula for that n is equals to minus infinity to infinity x phi of n into z to the power minus n okay but the given x phi of n is del of n okay del of n into z to the power minus n but now this del of n will be existing okay it will exist only for n is equals to 0 if you are substituting any other value of n minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 so this value will be 0 0 multiplied by anything will be 0 similarly if you are substituting n is equals to 1 2 3 4 and so on so again it will be 0 so 0 multiplied by anything will be 0 so this will only exist for n is equals to 0 so if i am substituting n is equals to 0 in this case so i will get del of 0 multiplied by z to the power 0 so it will be simply 1 so that means uh, the required z transform that is x phi of z will be equals to 1 simply right and irrespective of value of z right the uh, value of x phi of z will be 1 okay you can substitute any value of z in this case but still you will get x phi of z is equals to 1 so that means roc in this case will be entire z plane that means all values of z okay even z is equals to infinity as well as z is equals to 0 all values of z will be included in the roc right so this is how you will be identifying z transform next example is x6 of n is equals to del of n minus k for k greater than 0 so it is x6 of n is equals to del of n minus k and for k greater than 0 that means for positive values of k okay so for positive values of k this x of n is equals to del of n minus k so it's a transform can be represented x6 of z is equals to summation again n is equals to minus infinity to infinity x6 of n into z to the power minus n similarly you can write here n is equals to minus infinity to infinity in place of x6 of n you can represent del of n minus k into z to the power minus n x6 of z 
so again this del of n minus k okay as we know that del of n is the unit sample sequence as seen in the previous slide del of n is equals to 1 for n is equals to 0 that means parameter passed to this will should be 0 so when this will be 0 when you will be substituting n is equals to k okay so k minus k will be 0 okay so i can write here this function as this will be having value 1 for n is equals to k right so if i am substituting n is equals to k so k minus k will be 0 and del of 0 will be 1 and otherwise it will be 0 okay right so del of n minus k will be 1 for n is equals to k and it will be 0 otherwise okay because if i am substituting n is equals to k k minus k will be 0 so del of 0 will be 1 right so that means this z transform that is x6 of z you can identify for n is equals to k only okay so that means del of k minus k multiplied by z to the power minus k okay so simply you will get x6 of z is equals to z to the power minus k okay so this is the required z transform okay that is z to the power minus k right and in this case the roc will be again roc will be entire z plane okay entire z plane except z is equals to 0 because if i am substituting z is equals to 0 so it will be 1 upon 0 because k is positive here condition given as k is greater than 0 that means k is positive so z to the power minus k so it will be 1 upon z to the power k right so 1 upon z to the power k so if i am substituting z is equals to 0 so it will be 1 upon 0 1 upon 0 will be infinity right so the roc will be all values of z except z is equals to 0 similarly the last example is that x7 of n is equals to del of n plus k for k greater than 0 okay so is x7 of n del of n plus k for k greater than 0 so again in this case these simple uh, the difference is here it is del of n minus k it is del of n plus k so this del of n plus k will be having value 1 for n is equals to if i am substituting n is equals to minus k here okay so minus k plus k will be 0 okay so del of 0 will be 1 otherwise it will be 0 we have seen this unit sample sequence when we are seeing the elementary discrete time signals right so the value of del of n will be 1 only for n is equals to 0 and it is 0 otherwise okay so again the z transform is represented as x7 of z value summation n is equals to minus infinity to infinity x7 of n into z to the power minus n okay so summation n is equals to minus infinity to be infinity del of n plus k into z to the power minus n but as it only exists for n is equals to minus k okay because for other values of n it is zero so for other values of n it will be zero but it will exist only for n is equals to minus k so i can substitute n is equals to minus k here so del of minus k plus k multiplied by z to the power minus of minus k z to the power minus of minus k will be there right so it will be minus k plus k will be zero so it will be one and it will be z to the power k simply so therefore the required z transform is x7 of z is equals to z to the power k okay so this is the required z transform so again in this case roc will be again entire z plane except z is equals to infinity okay if i am substituting zero here so the value will be zero but if i am substituting infinity so value will be infinity so again roc will be all values of z except z is equals to infinity so this is how you will be identifying z transform and the roc okay so in today's session what we have discussed we have discussed 
how Z transform is used to analyze the given LTI system. Okay, so you can identify the Z transform of the given discrete time signal X of n by using this formula. That is X of Z is equals to summation n minus infinity to infinity X of n into Z to the power minus n. So Z transform is the reversible process. So therefore, the relationship can be represented like this. That is X of n. Z transform is X of Z, and from X of Z you can identify X of n by using inverse Z transform. So the Z transform of X of n can be represented like this. Okay, where you are identifying the Z transform of X of n, and it is denoted as X of Z. Right, and where Z is the complex variable, you are simply converting the time domain signal. Okay, time domain signal into Z complex domain okay, or z plane right so we are seeing the definition of roc this region of conversion is the set of all values of z for which x of z attains a finite value okay so you can identify values of z such that x of z should be a finite value right so we are seeing one example here where we solve multiple problems okay where we identified their respective z transform as well as roc that is region of conversion so region of conversion in most of the cases was the entire z plane right in some of these cases it doesn't include z is equals to zero in some of the cases it doesn't include z is equals to infinity in some of the cases it doesn't include z is equals to zero and z is equals to infinity Okay, so we have seen this example. In next session, uh, we will solve some more examples on Z transform. Okay, so thank you for joining this session.